Good evening. Welcome to this weekly service of evening prayer here at First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. We're now just days away from Christmas, and Reverend Wes Allen and I thank you for joining us to pray tonight. Christian author Anne Voskamp wrote a very helpful word for us to hear at this point in the season of Advent. She wrote this, You are most prepared for Christmas when you are done trying to make your performance into the gift and instead revel in his presence as the gift. Like few other practices, apart from worship and fasting, prayer prepares us to revel in the presence of Jesus, our newborn Savior and Lord. We will not offer a service of evening prayer next week, the week between Christmas Day and New Year's Day. We will bring a service on the first Thursday in 2023. Do join us for our Christmas worship services. On Christmas Eve Eve, December the 23rd, we will offer our Christmas Eve Eve services. Because of the weather, those services will be held in the commons lobby at 3 in the afternoon and at 7. We'll have battery-operated candles for you. We'll sing a lot of carols. Reverend Allen will bring a message for us. The service will be about 20 minutes. It won't quite be the same as being outside, but I think it will be lovely and beautiful all the same. On Saturday, Christmas Eve, we offer four services, a 4 o'clock children's service, a 6 o'clock lessons and carols service, an 8.30 communion service, and an 11 o'clock lessons and carols. All four services will be held in the sanctuary, and all will be live-streamed. On Christmas morning, Sunday, the 25th of December, we will worship in the sanctuary at 9.30, one service together. Reverend Dr. Jonathan Miller will preach, We'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together on Christmas Day. Afterwards, we're offering a Christmas Day brunch in Fellowship Hall. We have Christmas breakfast casseroles and coffee cakes and fruit and a happy birthday Jesus cake. So I hope you'll join us. It should be a beautiful morning. And if you have no other place to go or if you know someone else who has no family to be with, who will be on their own, I encourage you to invite them to come with you to worship and to brunch. Our way of the week this week is number six, forgive again. I was reminded of Charles Dickens' classic book, The Christmas Carol, and all the mentions of the gospel or the gospel being alluded to in that marvelous story. In one part of the story, Fred, the nephew of Scrooge, is having a conversation with his uncle, you'll remember how down on Christmas Scrooge was. He didn't see much point to it. And his nephew, Fred, speaks of his own practice of Christmas in the following way. He said, and this is the nephew, Fred says, I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time when it has come round, apart from the veneration due to its sacred name and origin, if anything belonging to it can be apart from that as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. The only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely and to think of people below them as they really were fellow passengers to the grave and not as another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And therefore, Uncle Scrooge, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good and will do me good, and I say, God bless it. I'm struck by Fred's words of the reminder of forgiveness. And so it's so fitting, it seems to me, that we consider this practice of forgiveness. Way six, forgive again. You'll listen to a video that I made, and here's what I'm asking you to do, and make it a point of action as you move into Christmas with whomever you'll be. 
work on dropping whatever anger you may have right now in your life. Prayer is a huge help for that. Don't let your anger come between you and someone else. Stop bringing up the hurt in public or with friends. Stop nursing the memory of how you've been wrong. Friends, forgive again, and let's listen to the video now. My name is Stuart Spencer. It's my great joy and privilege to serve as a pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. Way number six, forgive again. The ellipsis or the three dots remind us that forgiveness is a process. Just as God forgives us, heal relationships by extending forgiveness graciously and generously. Forgive everyone, everything. Start by praying for those you resent or hate. Ask for every blessing you would want for the one you're struggling to forgive. In the fall of 2018, when we were working on the creation of the ways, it hit me. We have to have a way statement about forgiveness. You see, we are formed as God's people through forgiveness. The grace and mercy and forgiveness of God is poured into our lives through the Lord Jesus Christ. But we're also, as a congregation, formed through forgiveness. And what God has done in our lives individually and as a congregation so lavishly, we must give in kind. Jesus says in Matthew 6, if you forgive the sins of those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive your sins. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Why forgive? You see, it's important that we practice forgiveness so that we can be free of the burden of our anger and resentment. We forgive to let go and therefore to be in a place of effectiveness. I'll never be effective if I'm filled with outrage and I'll never be where God wants me to be. I've known people who have lived miserably for years, even decades, because they refuse to forgive. Forgiveness means letting go. One of the words used in the New Testament for forgiveness means to release. What do I release? Well, I start by releasing my anger and my bitterness. I even give up holding the wrong in front of the person that I'm struggling with to forgive. Our way gives us a wonderfully practical way to begin this process. The way suggests that we pray for those that we hate or resent. In prayer, we ask for everything we would want for them. Here's how this prayer might go. God, would you be with so-and-so? Would you pour into their lives your mercy, grace, and your deep love for them? Would you bless their relationships? And would you give them a joy in serving and knowing you? Amen. If you pray a prayer like that for the person that you're struggling to forgive every day for two weeks, I assure you, your resentment will vanish. Often as I have prayed that prayer, I've found that my resentment disappears in just a couple of days. Let me show you something that's helped me. This bowl is filled with water and the water represents forgiveness. This is how the forgiveness process works. First, Jesus takes us in his nail-scarred hands and we are passed through the waters of forgiveness. And Jesus forgives us everything. Then I take my hands and I imagine the person that I'm struggling to forgive and I pass them through the same waters of forgiveness. Once forgiven, then I forgive. FPC Morristown, forgive again.
Our scripture lesson today comes from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to these words found in chapter 56, verse 7. I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem, and I will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices because my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Friends, as we begin our time of prayer together, I do want to share a few requests. Uh, please continue to be praying for the O'Connor family. Specifically, we ask for Brenna. Uh, she is a 14-year-old a girl who has recently been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. Uh, her family has postponed um, her receiving a hysterectomy until after uh, the Christmas and New Year holiday. So just pray for them in this difficult, uh, difficult time. We also want to be holding Barbara Duffy's son and colleagues and students in prayer. Uh, Barb's son is a school guidance counselor, and a student uh, last week uh, ended his own life. And so we want to be lifting up that community in prayer. Uh, pray for the Duffies, pray for the school and the students. Also, um, continue to pray for Randy Gage. We do have some good news. Randy on Wednesday, yesterday, was discharged from the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania uh, back to home. So pray for her, her and Earl as um, they adjust to now being at home. And uh, we ask that we pray for continued weight gain for Randy and healing. Continue to pray for Gary Bender. Uh, Gary's in a step-down unit in intensive care at Jefferson Hospital. Uh, he's currently battling pneumonia along with uh, this continued nausea that he's been experiencing. Uh, so continue to lift Nancy and Gary in your prayers. We also ask for prayer for Mike and Marsha Jones. Marsha, uh, as some of you know, recently underwent rotator cuff surgery. Uh, she's home at their house in the Evergreens, uh, but we want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, also, as, Michael's as Mike's trying to shoulder some additional responsibilities uh, and caring for her. Also be praying for Jim Weber, who earlier today underwent surgery on his back. Be praying for Tony Vega, who uh, works at Urban Promise in Camden uh, and is a beloved uh, person who works there by all the kids. Uh, the children and families uh, love Tony and also love his brother, Albert. Uh, but pray for the Vega family. Tony, uh, late last week, was hit by a car in Camden while he was crossing the road, and he's now at Cooper Hospital uh, and healing and recovering, but we want to just lift them up in prayer and the entire Urban Promise family as well. And then finally, I ask that you pray for those who this Christmas season is difficult, uh, for those that are separated from their families. Perhaps it's because they're stationed uh, in another area of the world or another part of the country and they can't go and be with their family during Christmas and New Year. Uh, or others that are isolated or ostracized or separated from family in not a physical sense, but perhaps a mental uh, or spiritual sense. Uh, so we ask for prayer for healing uh, and for reconciliation in this season um, of Christmas. So friends, with these prayers, uh, let us now turn to our Lord who promises to be with us, to hear us, and is present. Let us pray. Holy and living God, you are a God who writes and participates in the stories of our lives and the stories that have come before us. And we thank you for the living story of Jesus. Not a distant story that we just remember, but a story that we relive and remember as if it is happening now. We celebrate this season not just because it brings us fuzzy and happy feelings, but also because it's a story of grace, of your grace, and a story of humility, your humility, a God who chose to come into this world, 
the God of the universe, willing to dwell among people. And we rejoice in that good news this evening. We thank you, Lord, for our own stories and how you rejoice with us in the joys in life. We also thank you for being with us in our stories while we grieve and suffer in life. You are not merely a narrator of our stories, but Lord, you are intimately in them, a part of their unfolding. You hear our prayers. You are Emmanuel, as the prophets declared, God with us. Lord, this evening we ask that you would be especially close to those who find the Christmas season difficult. In the midst of the busyness and the chaos of the season and of life, there are many who are experiencing sadness, grief, sorrow, and loss. We ask, Lord, that you would wrap them in a blanket of hope. in a blanket of comfort. May they experience intimately and know and receive your peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask, Lord, today that you would give this gift of hope to the O'Connor family this Christmas. May they know your love in the midst of this trying and difficult time. And Lord, we ask boldly that you would bring healing to the body of Brenna and give wisdom to the doctors and oncologists and team of people who will be treating her to rid her young body of this cancer. We ask, Lord, that you would give the gift of purpose to those struggling with mental illness, for those who grieve as they witness the darkness that is enveloping our world spiritually, and physically. Lord, we, we ask that you would lift up Barbara's son, lift up their entire school and the students and the faculty. Lord, break down the dividing walls that create and separate mental illness and the pain that so many face. Lord, knock down these walls so that it is no longer a stigma in our society, but something that we can talk about and embrace so that we can walk alongside young people and adults who are in the shadows, in the pit of despair, so that we can be with them just as you are with us. We thank you, Lord, for the progress that Randy has made, and we rejoice that she is home. Continue to bring healing to Randy. Give her stamina and perseverance in these coming days and weeks. We ask, Lord, that you would bring comfort to her and Earl. We ask the same for Gary and Nancy. And we thank you for the many improvements that Gary has made over the last several months. But Lord, we continue to ask for you to bring healing. Bring healing to his spine, relieve him of the nausea, free his lungs from pneumonia, and give him the strength to heal and to recover. Continue to be the bedrock and foundation that you have been for Nancy. Lord, we thank you for your steadfastness and love during this difficult time in her life. And Lord, we rejoice for the countless men and women from this community and congregation who have walked alongside and supported Nancy and Gary. We ask, Lord, for those recovering from surgery, lift up Jim and Marcia and be with them as they heal. Be also, Lord, with their spouses, with Ginny and with Mike, as they shoulder additional roles and responsibilities 
to allow for healing. And Lord, as we head and continue and to head into this weekend that will be filled with great pageantry, may we focus not on the poinsettias, not on the lights and the trees, but Lord, may we focus on the manger and the gift that you have given us, not just a gift in a child, but a gift in salvation that comes from you. Grant us all the things necessary for our collective life together and bring us to be of one heart, body, and mind as a society and as your church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray these things, praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, I wish you a joyous and Merry Christmas. And I hope that it will be shared with friends and family. And I hope and pray that opportunities to share the love and grace of Jesus Christ, that you may share that great news with all who have ears to hear. Friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. De go declaring that God is with us that the Christ child, the Messiah, has arrived. Amen.